All right, guys, I got a bunch of parts in for a DIY inverter generator. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, basically DIY the Predator 9500 inverter generator and also the Duramax 9000i um, inverter generator. They, they are the exact same generator. They're made by the same company. Um, they're just spec for... Uh, for Duramax and for Predator, Predator. So anyway, um, I got parts here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox um, the uh, the engine here and the the chassis. It's basically a, a dolly cart. Um, I went ahead and machined uh, my my adapter. So this is a uh, taper adapter for one inch shaft. Um, I was in a bit of a hurry. I didn't. Uh, um, check for run out and it looks like I'm gonna have a little bit of um, run out so if this thing uh, starts shaking like a dog shit in a quarter um, I guess we'll know why <laughs> I'll have to pop it apart and uh, um, remake it but I think it'll be alright it's not that bad I don't know we'll see I'm gonna risk it but anyway um, I got these flanges here I got these from McMaster car they're 10 inch duck flanges is what they call them but they're they're made of angle iron so they're also called uh angle flanges i think or angle iron flanges or something like that granger also sells these other industrial supply um ebay amazon but the 10 inch is what you need and then uh for the the housing um shell you'll have to uh improvise make something work um, you know, find another another tank or something that's already pre-rolled. You know, and you'll just have to muscle in into the into those flanges. Unless you got a roller, um, like I do, um, I'm gonna CNC cut it. But you know, this is supposed to be DIY. Um, no reason that you can uh, um, create that housing yourself. The the this part here, you'll have to have a machinist do. Unless you unless you are a machinist or you have a lathe. Um, it's just, uh, it's about a five and a half degree, actually it's about five and a quarter degree, um, angle, taper angle from center line. So that worked, worked perfect. You can hear it squeaking, so it's making good contact. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff out of, out of the boxes and, uh, we'll see what we got. We got the uh, Duramax 500cc engine, uh, the Predator 9500 and, and Duramax both have the 459cc engine. Um, because I'm doing wood gas here, um, I will be wood gassing this, so I went with a little larger. I actually wanted to do a V-twin, but I figured for if I'm going to do a DIY video, I better kind of stick to the, the original plan of those those particular generators. And again, you know, if you have a 9500 or the 9000i um, and you wear them out, don't throw them away because your your stator and the inverter box um, are still good, and and you could recreate it doing exactly what I'm going to do here in this in these uh, these videos. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, unbox the stuff, and we'll be back. All right, so I went ahead and uh, unboxed everything, put the cart together. Um, go over this plan. Uh, I was thinking uh, a couple options here. One is I could mount it, mount the cart so that it's upright like that, and then build a, a platform to come off the front that would hold the, the engine and generator head. And then that would give me this here to bolt the, uh, the, the inverter box and uh, the, the outputs. Um, I'll probably have a 220 and a 110 output on this, um, and then uh, this will be able to parallel with my other 9500 until I tear that one apart and, and make it into one of these as well. But, you know, that's one of the reasons you might want to consider DIYing this. Um, there's a couple of reasons. One is uh, the price. The Predator is 2300 bucks. And the Duramax, I think, is like 2600 
Um, I have, let's see, that Duramax engine I bought for $550, uh, $110 for the cart. And then the, the rotor stator assembly was $200, $250. So I'm not even in this 1000 bucks yet. Um, I still got to, if I were to buy the, the inverter box, which is also available on Amazon, I think that's like another 200 bucks. So, I mean, yeah, you can DIY this for half the cost of the 9500 but the 8750 inverter generator, you can buy that outright, right from Harbor Freight for like 1200 But, you know, it, one of the, the reason that I want to DIY this is so that I'm not replacing an entire generator every, every couple of years. So I'm building it this way so that when eventually that engine starts smoking and you know it doesn't want to run anymore i'll just buy another one and i'll you know swap it out um which isn't so easy with uh the uh the store-bought ones and i think that's uh for a reason because you know most most people that um that repair that stuff they wouldn't even touch it because it's not even worth it because the the labor involved to r and r an engine in one of them things is uh it's a lot it's, it's quite quite involved so uh i'm gonna try to build this in a simple platform to where where that that work can be done um cheap and easy and then instead of rebuilding the engine just buy a new engine i mean you could uh rebuild it if you can find the parts but that's the problem with uh, the life and engine is uh, part of the lawsuit with honda is that none of the dealers can um carry uh replacement parts to fix those engines so that's why one of the reasons they're they're so difficult to get parts for so so yeah i'm gonna get this card out of the way now. i went ahead and cut my my shaft adapter down to two and three quarter length and then I went ahead and uh, cut the slot. So this fits on here like so. And here's the rotor. So it's already grabbed on there. Um, I believe this is a uh, M8. It might be an M10. This metric, of course. So you only had a metric bolt with a, a washer to uh, press that on there. And then, uh, yeah, and then now we gotta build the, the housing. So, that's gonna be the, the next step in the next video is uh, I gotta design a, a plate that's gonna adapt to one of these flanges. So that our flange bolts on here. And then now we gotta figure out the depth of what this is gonna be. Now one thing, um be careful playing with this because the magnets in this thing are strong. And when you get this thing started, this wants to slam it right in there so you gotta be really careful with this so but yeah anyways i gotta figure out the depth of the housing and um weld that up and then um once we have the the housing bolted to the flange and the flange is bolted to the engine um there's gonna be a plate that the stator will will mount to and there'll be a flange out here that will mount here. And then we're gonna have to put a, a spacer in here between it and here to get this center. And then once you get that bolted together, you're gonna wanna pin it. You're gonna wanna um, drill some dowels, dowel holes and um, pin this so that you can um, put that back together. Anytime you loosen this plate up against the mortar though, you're gonna screw that alignment up. So, um, 
haven't quite figured that part out yet. You're probably just going to have to do a new alignment every any time that you disassemble that. <coughs> but that's really going to be it. Um, once I get that, and oh, once I get this part built, and then on the cart, then it's just a matter of hooking them wires up to the inverter box. So, yeah, so I'm going to get the designing that part and then uh we'll come back and uh go over the um that part of the build and then uh yeah and i think we'll just do a video just on that and then we'll do the the final video mounting everything up on the cart and uh um getting it operational all right guys thanks for watching